Hello. At a time where we've been told we should work from home if we possibly can, here are five reasons why working from home is actually a terrible idea and what you can do about it. Reason number one, escape to the country is on TV. My notifications keep beeping at me every few minutes and I'm surrounded by housework. How the hell am I supposed to focus? Start by turning off the TV. You can't work with that jabbering away in the background. And besides, that's what catch up is for, right? Silence your pop-up notifications so they're not demanding your attention every few moments like a spoiled child. They're the surefire way of getting you distracted and pulling your attention from what you should be doing. If you're anything like me, you'll find social media one of the biggest and worst distractions and time drains of all. So if you find it difficult to stay off sites like Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram, you can use an app such as Freedom that will block these sites for you for a set period of time while you work. Take back control of your day using the humble email autoresponder. They're not just for away days and holidays. Set a carefully crafted, worded response that lets your clients know you only check your emails a couple of times a day so that you can focus on the work that you're doing. It's a win-win. It frees you up time and headspace to focus on what you're supposed to be working on. It lets the client know that you've safely received their email. And okay, they may have to wait a little bit longer for a response from you, but at least they know that when you're working for them, you're not gonna be pulled off task every few moments, responding to emails to other clients. And try the Pomodoro technique. The Pomo what now? The Pomodoro Technique is a tried and trusted productivity hack that works by breaking your working day into manageable chunks of time. The name comes from the Italian from, for tomato. Think of those tomato shaped kitchen timers. But you don't need one of those for the Pomodoro Technique to work brilliantly for you. You can use the timer on your mobile phone or on your home assistant, such as Alexa, or download an app such as Focus Keeper or Forest that can do it for you. The idea is you set the timer for 25 minutes and you focus entirely on the task in hand with no distractions. Don't let anything pull you off task. After the 25 minute timer goes off, you take a five minute break, get up away from your desk, leave your laptop behind, go downstairs, make yourself a cup of coffee, do some stretches, just get moving. Anything that uh, takes you away from your laptop and kind of breaks your focus and concentration for just five minutes. Rinse and repeat for four sections of 25 minutes and take a longer break after the last Pomodoro. You'll find it's amazing what you can achieve in a purposeful five minute break. And it's a great way of breaking your day into manageable chunks of time and staying focused. Reason number two, home office. What home office? My printer is in my wardrobe and I'm working from my ironing board. Not everyone is lucky enough to have a dedicated home office, but you don't need to have a dedicated room in which to work effectively from home. Get creative with a quiet corner of your bedroom or your living room, or even work from the kitchen table. Hell, why not work from the ironing board? You can always tell people you're an early adopter of the trend for standing up to work. Who needs one of those expensive raised desks when you can work from your ironing board? It's meant to be healthy, right? And just make sure that you 
keep your work zone and your home zone separate if you possibly can for the sake of your family and your relationships a lot of people out there are finding they need to work from home with their partner or their family and it can be a real strain on your relationships so keeping work and home zone separately as a golden rule can really help your mental health and um, your relationships with your family and your partner it's also a good idea to ban working from the sofa and sitting in bed. It's kind of a no-brainer and it's really easy to fall into bad habits. Reason number three, being alone is driving me crazy. I'm having conversations with the cat. Believe me, I know. I don't just have two cats and regularly talk to them but I've now worked from home for 20 years. And I started working from home, having been used to the buzz and the vibe of working in a busy agency environment. The first few years, I found working from home such a challenge because I'm quite a sociable person and I get my energy from having conversations and the buzz of being around other people. But things were different then. There was no social media hell there was barely any internet and today there's no excuse for feeling alone find your community i can't stress this enough look for like-minded groups and individuals who are in the same boat and perhaps working in your geographical location or working in the same field as you are and use things like Facebook groups and Slack groups to connect with them, to collaborate, to share advice, and to um, help one another out when you're um, really struggling. Use Twitter hours such as hashtag Content Club UK and hashtag Freelance Chat. These are a great way of finding people who are in the same boat as you for sharing advice, for um, sharing even jokes and funny gifts, and just feeling like you're part of something bigger. You could consider setting up a mastermind group with like-minded people, um, either in your local area, again, or in your field of expertise. I'm part of a copywriter's mastermind, and we have a monthly Zoom call, as well as a, a thriving WhatsApp group, where we share advice and tips with one another, as well as celebrating our wins. And get real about this because we're not doing one another any favors by pretending working from home and freelance life and self-employment are rosy. It's just setting unrealistic expectations and it's very difficult when we feel that we have to compare our own lives with those of other people and we feel like we're lacking in some way. We're all ultimately in the same boat. There are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people out there in the same situation as you are. Reason number four, I'm stuck indoors eating biscuits all day. It's just not healthy. You're damn right it's not. You know what it's like. You go from lying in bed to sitting at your desk to sitting on the sofa all evening watching Netflix. Inactivity is rapidly becoming the enemy to our health and a sedentary lifestyle is starting to see a big increase in cases of things like heart disease and diabetes. But there's a lot we can actually do ourselves to uh, reduce the risk of getting conditions like this. Don't spend your day hunched over your laptop, barely moving. Take regular breaks to step away from your laptop, stretch out those muscles. Perhaps take swap some of your Zoom calls for walk and talks around the block. Keep some hand weights to hand. These literally live in the drawer just down there in my office. And I often do a few reps when I'm doing read throughs of the copy that I've written. Above all, make sure you leave the house for proper exercise at least once a day. You might want to take the dog for a long walk across fields, get out on your bike, or just take a walk around the block. 
getting outside and being in fresh air, particularly if you can be surrounded by nature, but it doesn't matter if you can't. If you live in a city, that might not be that easy. But just getting outside and being able to see the sky in daylight will give you a boost of endorphins. Those are the happy hormones that help you, um, they give you a well-being, a boost, and help you stay productive and focused and just to enjoy self-employment. Getting away from your laptop will give you a productivity boost and it helps to kind of reboot your brain and um, it, it can often just reset those mental blocks and help you process problems and things that you've got stuck on. Use your five minute Pomodoro breaks to load and unload the dishwasher, to hang the washing or just to run the hoover around. You thought I'd forgotten about the housework, didn't you? It'll save you finishing your day to find a pile of chores waiting for you. No one wants that. And swap those biscuits for healthy snacks. I would strongly recommend investing £40 or so on a soup maker. It's one of the best things I ever bought. I can shove my leftover vegetables in the soup maker, press a button, and by the time lunch comes along, I've got a healthy and delicious and nutritious soup to eat instead of biscuits. Keep a pint glass on your desk and keep it refilled to stay hydrated. It doesn't just give you younger looking skin, but it will also keep you getting up and down from your desk for all the refilling and emptying. Reason number five, I'm stuck indoors all day. How the heck am I supposed to keep learning? Believe me, there is never any excuse to stop learning. And staying creative is a really important way to boost your own personal success. Keep asking questions and stay curious. And there are so many ways online that we can do this now. Sign up for free Facebook Lives and Instagram Lives for webinars and events. Learn from those who've been successful in your field through things like inspiring podcasts and audiobooks. Connect with people who you admire through social media channels such as LinkedIn and Twitter. And read blog posts, articles and books from people in your field who have already achieved success. Books like this. Survival Skills for Freelancers is intended to help you become more successful as a freelancer or a small business owner without the overwhelm, stress and burnout that are so common in the freelance world. It will help you to adapt to freelance life and to avoid some of the pitfalls and some of the mistakes that I made in my 20 year freelance journey. The tips in today's talk have been adapted from survival skills for freelancers. I hope you find them helpful. Good luck with your own working from home.